Master Chef is back. Hundreds auditioned, and now the best 60 amateur cooks are through. I'm not that mad. Wait till you hear what's in my dish. But No, we call that enthusiastically crisp. Each week, 12 new contestants battle for just four places in the quarterfinals. So raw. Only the strongest will make it to the final challenges. I wish they'd live in the soap up 20 minutes I've been waiting. I love it. <laughs> they want to survive this competition, they're gonna have to be good. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. all think they've got what it takes to become master chef. But at the end of today's heat, only two will go through to Friday's quarter-final. Six amateur cooks in a kitchen, and one of you could be our champion. That's, of course, if you can cook. <laughs> Right now, you are going to cook for us one dish. This is your calling card. You never get another opportunity, do you, to make a good first impression? Ladies and gentlemen, one hour. Let's cook. My mother and my grandmother both encouraged me to cook, and we now all live in one big building together in a weird family unit. Hello, Beanie. You're, you're doing Thai cooking. I am indeed, yes. Why, why Thai cooking as your, as your opening statement? Um, I was very lucky that I used to live in Thailand. Did you really? I did indeed, yes. Did you, how did that come about? I was a scuba diver. Were you? Yeah. Wonderful. Beanie, I'm looking forward to this. And if there's an Aussie bloke up the end of the hall, we're probably looking forward to it even more. Hope so. Beanie is cooking for us. My favourite cuisine in the whole world, Thai. The Thai fish cakes need to be rubbery, the som tum needs to be fiery hot, and that pomelo needs to be broken up and be really refreshing. Hello. I'm always in the kitchen. I'm always doing things with food. You know, embarrassingly. When I got together with my partner, for example, I was like, don't look under the bed, there's magazines there, and it wasn't what she thought they were. It was actually full of food magazines. So, you know, it's like those... You know, that's my kind of relationship with food. Hello, Ling. Hello. What are you making for us today? Started the chicken off in a pan and I'm finishing it in the oven. And that's going to have a Madeira pancetta and mushroom reduced sauce with a bit of cream in there and served on a champ potato mash. How's the first experience of MasterChef? Um, it's very interesting to be here, actually, because it's quite strange spending years watching this series. And here we are, we have live Greg in front of me here. Mushrooms have to have a little crunch on them still. The chickens are going to be cooked all the way through but not be dry. And he's served with shot potatoes. A crunch of green, but the whites of the spring is cooked all the way through. I'll tell you what, if he can do this, this is going to be brilliant. You've had 20 minutes. A master plan, as far as cooking goes, I suppose, you know, it's a bit of pie in the sky. Quite like a book. That would be pretty cool. The ginger chef. <laughs> Hello, Drew. Tell me where your passion for cooking came from. My mum, really. You know, everyone says their mum's the best cook, but my mum's the best cook. You know, you just love your mum's cooking, don't you, really? Drew is cooking for us char grilled fennel, braised fennel, a sauce made of fennel, or tomato, and olive oil on olive oil mash with a piece of pan fried green. So we might have a greasy fennel fish dish. However, if Drew gets this right, we may have a great classic cook on our hands. We're over halfway. It's 25 minutes left. I love the peacefulness of cooking. You can sit there, have a glass of wine, have some music on in the background. It's my relaxation. I don't think today it will be that relaxing, though. <laughs> How 
Hannah, what are you making right now? I'm making loin of venison with crispy bubble and squeak, cabbage and bacon and a blackberry balsamic jus. Isn't all bubble and squeak crispy? Well, no, I deep fry it. You deep fry bubble deep and squeak? Deep fry bubble and squeak. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Healthy cook, are you? Absolutely. I enjoy deep fried food and meat, so, yeah. It's not the venison and the blackberries. It's not the venison and the bubble and squeak. It's the bubble and squeak with the blackberries and balsamic vinegar that concern me. However, it's a refreshing thing to have somebody walk in and say, this is what I love to eat and that's why I'm cooking it. I have never done anything like this before in my life. I think when I first applied, it was, I, was, I was fairly confident, but that, that confidence has kind of slowly been replaced by terror. <laughs> you have got loads and loads of energy. You are bouncing around all over the place. Yeah, I've got a lot to do. <laughs> we only have an hour, so uh, needs must. What are you going to make for us? Uh, I'm making vegetable samosas with a uh, tomato, coriander and cucumber salsa. Uh, with a mint fajita. Why, why are you here on MasterChef? Um, I don't know, it's sort of spontaneous. Everybody's been saying I should, should go for it. Something I never really fancied and I thought, why not? You know, you only live once. Go for it. Luke, I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> the force is strong, yeah? <laughs> Luke has made his own pastry for the outside of the samosa. He's made his own filling, he's stuffing it, he's frying it. I've got to say, I love a brave cook, basically saying, I love good food and it doesn't have to be complicated. That is exciting. Ten minutes, just ten minutes. Growing up, it wasn't you know, necessarily a done thing for um, a boy to be in the kitchen. So I had to really fight tooth and nail to be allowed to pursue my passion. What are you making, Ricky? Um, I'm making coriander duck with flaked rice uh, with some potato and pomegranate through it and a raita with mustard and banana. So let me get this right. We've got coriander duck. Yeah, coriander mm. ginger, lime, yeah. Mm, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> but duck and a banana. Ricky's combinations sound extraordinary. We have duck served with a writer, not made with mint and cucumber like the rest of the world. No, no, no. He's going to put in banana and mustard. I don't know where these flavours come from. I don't understand them at all. Hello? No, I think you need to take this ingredient away. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. It'll work. <laughs> you think it'll work? Yeah. OK. Just three minutes left. That's it. Time's up. For her calling card dish, former Thai resident Beanie is serving Thai fish cakes with two Thai salads. Som tum with green papaya and yam som o with pomelo grapefruit. Your som tum, your green papaya salad, is made nicely, but it needs to be a little bit more fiery hot. Your fish cake, the flavours are OK, but good fish cake should be rubbery. Your pomelo salad is nice, sour and sweet. It's just that all these things going together become a little bit confused. The one I love the most is that pomelo. Get that pomelo sharpness is, is a lovely sensation, but my palate is searching around for the heat. Mm. I just want chilli. Obviously, the flavours weren't quite right for them, so I obviously failed a little bit on, on that aspect, but hopefully in the next round, I'll do a bit better. Charity volunteer Leng has cooked pan-fried chicken breast with pancetta and mushrooms, champ mash, wilted spinach and a Madeira sauce. The flavour of your chomp is lovely. Your spinach is nice and it's, it's been well seasoned. But your chicken is overcooked and dry. Your mashed potatoes are a little bit thin. Your sauce needs to be a lot thicker, a lot more vibrant. What you were attempting to do, I said, was risky. And I don't think you've quite pulled it off. Yeah. 
I think you've got a bit of potential. I, I, I think your choice of ingredients here and some of your flavours are, are very, very good indeed. I think you've been let down on a bit of technique. You know, I didn't wow them in the way that I think the calling cards should wow them. So, you know, for that, I know I've got to work a bit harder. Sales manager Drew has made pan-fried bream, olive oil mash, wilted spinach, braised and char-grilled fennel, and a tomato and fennel sauce served with aioli. There are things on here I really like, Drew. I like your mashed potato, I like your aioli, I like the way you've cooked your fish. However, there is absolutely no place for tomatoes on that dish whatsoever. What we've got on here is all the things that you love to eat yep. on one plate. Yep. Basically, you either take away the mash or you take away the tomatoes. Yeah. You know, one of those two go. Yeah, OK. Some positive comments, some constructive criticism. I think for first dish, I'm reasonably happy. Insurance broker Anna's dish is roast loin of venison, crispy bubble and squeak, savoy cabbage with bacon, and a blackberry and balsamic jus. Your venison is cooked really nicely. I love your little bubble and squeak. Well, it's not a little bubble and squeak. It's the biggest bubble and squeak I've seen in my life. And it's got great flavours of a roast dinner. You like fried food and meat, and I tell you what, you, you make good fried food and meat, Anna. Thank you. You know, and I know, that sauce for that venison is perfect. There is nowhere near enough of it because you've only wanted it as a decoration, which in my mind is a shame. There wasn't enough sauce. But actually, that was, that was really the, the worst comment. So if that's it, then it's not too bad. Robotics engineer Luke has made vegetable samosas with a tomato, cucumber and coriander salsa served with a writer. Anybody who walks in here and makes samosa from scratch and delivers such wonderful flavours has got to be a really good cook. Luke, that is awesome. What you have here is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Thanks a lot for the comments. <laughs> I'm relieved. I'm kind of glad it's over, but it's really good to have um, good feedback on the, on, the first, on the first thing I've done. It kind of settles the nerves a little and... Uh, Really, really pleased. PR worker Ricky's dish is marinated coriander duck with spiced flaked rice and potato served with a mustard and banana writer. Should we do this? Yeah. Because this one is a little bit of a concern. Really? Duck and banana? I really like that flaked rice, potato and pomegranate combination. And I thought I was going to really dislike it. Good job. The writer, the slipperiness of the banana inside that yoghurt makes me feel like I'm having breakfast. I don't think much of it, Ricky, I'm, af I'm afraid to say. It leaves me feeling a little flat, this dish. I'm disappointed that I need to shake that off now. There's no time to sit and, and mope about it. I need to show them what I can do because it really does mean a lot to me. That was great. We've now got a decent idea of the sort of cooks you are. We will see you again very soon. Go on, off you go. This is the sweet or savoury invention test. Your choice is yours. So I'm going to do the savoury dish. Right. Ooh. John will now have an hour to create a dish from tofu, pak choy, asparagus, coconut milk, anchovy fillets, 
bamboo shoots, sesame seeds, mint, coriander, and aubergines. Those contestants are going to find this one tough. One hour, one dish. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to do a red curry with aubergines and tofu. I'm sold. Make a paste first. And then I'll deep fry the tofu so it's crunchy on the outside so it doesn't fall apart. Are you sure? Yeah, what's going to happen is the shell will crack, then the egg will taste of curry. Well, I've never seen that. Ah. Not bad. Not bad at all. From the savoury box, John has made a red Thai curry using pan-fried tofu, aubergine and curried egg, served with basmati rice and toasted sesame seeds. I honestly can't believe the flavour that you've managed to get inside that curry. Good. You've produced a good dish here. I think this is a tough round for, for our amateurs. We're going to give you 10 minutes to decide whether you want to cook a sweet or a savoury dish. The green savoury boxes contain the same ingredients that John cooked with. Only Ricky has chosen the sweet box, which contains ricotta, black cherries, bananas, Kirsch, cocoa powder, cashew nuts, nutmeg, and sponge fingers. It's nice not to have the competition over a sweet dish, but a little bit disheartened because had I picked the savoury dish, I'm sure I would have known what to do instantly. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to invent just one dish. One hour to cook it. At the end of this, two of you are going home. Let's cook. The lack of meat made me feel a bit nervous, but um, in hindsight, I wish I'd chosen the sweet box. Ready to show you that I do have the skills and ability to produce something that will give you and myself hope that I can, I can carry on. Halfway, you've got 30 minutes to go. Beanie, how are you finding Marsha? Um, a lot more stressful than I thought I was going to. Um, and I thought my last dish was quite good and then neither of you were that happy with it. So I was a bit like, oh, that was my best idea. So, uh, so hopefully I can maybe pull it out of the bag when I'm being a bit inventive on the car. Do you usually cook with tofu? I do sometimes. I have quite a lot of friends that are vegan. Also, I eat a lot of Asian food anyway in my diet. You've got 17 minutes left, that's it. Schoolboy era. Oh, my own. I'll tell you what, I think Drew's in big trouble. What's your backup plan then? Uh, I'm putting some rice on, I'm doing some sort of stir fry because I've not got a lot of time, man. Okay. You got off to a really good start. What do you want to show us now? Well, hopefully that I can follow it through. Yeah, you know, that's what it's all about. Two minutes. That's it. Finished. Stop. Step away. From the savoury box, Anna has stuffed the aubergines with shallots, chilli and garlic, 
serving them with lemon and coriander rice and a coconut sauce. An interesting concoction, an invention definitely, Anna. The flavours in the aubergines are not here nor there. I like your sauce, but the sauce doesn't go with the rice and the sauce doesn't go with the aubergines. OK. I don't agree with him here at all. I, I, I think this is really quite clever. For an invention test, I'm actually quite impressed. Thank you. I'm a bit disappointed that John didn't like it, but then I was really pleased with Greg's comments. I'm quite relieved it's over, to be honest. <laughs> After planning to serve a tortilla, Drew has now made egg fried rice with stir fried vegetables. It couldn't have gone any worse. It's hit you about as bad as it could, Drew, yeah. but um, well done for persevering. With 15 minutes to go, Drew, it's a really pleasant bowl of rice. It could probably do with a lot more egg in it. I don't know what to say to you, though, Drew. I mean, you know, bad luck with the, uh, the dropping of the tortilla. Mm. Not happy, really. Um, it's just a disaster. Leng has prepared a vegetable curry, deep fried tofu with sesame seeds, stir fried pak choy, and rice. You have cooked everything nicely. I do like the flavour in your, in your vegetable curry. It's creamy and there's heat in there as well. I think this is a pretty decent invention, Tess, Lee. I like the flavours of your curry, as Greg does. I just believe everything should be in with the curry. I think that fried crispy tofu should be amongst the sauce, as should the bok choy. It doesn't come together as a plate of food for me. Yeah. You know, I tried and that's, you know, that's all I can do, really. <laughs> has invented tofu tacos with an asparagus salsa and a sweet chilli sauce. You've got a serious eye for presentation. That looks really good. I've got no idea what that's going to taste like. No, have I. <laughs> Those little tacos, they work. The tofu's perfectly cooked. The sesame on the outside has got a nice crunch. I thought it's all terribly bland until I put your almost fermented kind of chilli sauce on. Amazing inventive food mind, Luke. Everything you've touched so far is really impressing me. <sighs> Luke? Yep. I think it is an amazing dish. You have shown skill, you're showing style, individuality, guts. But what I find more incredible, Luke, because you looked at those ingredients and you went to a place that not even my mind would go to. <laughs> the taco? Cool bananas. <laughs> good on you. I'm feeling really good. I was really worried. I've never cooked tofu before. I thought, what have I made here? <laughs> I'm really, really happy. I just feel like I couldn't have gone better in the end. Beanie's savoury dish is an Asian-inspired coconut and tofu soup with basmati rice. What's really nice is I've got this sort of this sense of chilli warming my palate. All the vegetables are nicely cooked. The flavours are, are saltiness that you wanted, coconut that you have. It's without issue, without being spectacular. There aren't any problems here, but I wouldn't write home about the dish. It was nice, which is, I suppose, better than awful, but kind of slight damning praise, really. Yeah, a bit disappointed. Ricky was the only contestant to choose the sweet box, and he's made a black forest cheesecake with kirsch-soaked cherries, a cherry jelly, and caramel cashews. The flavours are, are perfect. 
and the textures are perfect. But the booze on the cherry <laughs> is the piece de resistance. Very nice. I love it. Uh -huh. Love it. I think it's great. And it's fun. You've shown us you make a jelly, how to make a mousse, you can do caramel, you're demonstrating skill. Ricky, I'm really pleased. I'm so relieved. I think I've um, redeemed myself after the mishaps in the calling card dish. And I hope that's enough to take me to the next round. Look, let's not mess around here. Luke appears to be a serious, serious talent. He shows skill, he delivers flavour. It's really clever cooking. Let's agree, he's staying in the competition, isn't he? He's absolutely brilliant. I think Drew's invention test was a little scary. You and I know what comes up next. And with the panic that went on with Drew today, I think it's time to say goodbye. Can I put my hand up for one cook? And that's Ricky. You know, we really gave him a hard time about duck and banana, but he came back with that cherry cheesecake and he made a nice dessert. It was tasty. Let's put him through. I like Anna. I like the way she cooks. And I thought you were a little harsh on her, actually. I think she's a great cook, Greg. It just, for me, was a bit mismatched. But I agree with you. I think Anna stays. Great. And now we've got to try and work out who stays and who goes between Beanie and Lang. I'm disappointed with Beanie. Um, she lived in Thailand. She's now cooked for me two Thai-style dishes. Just not enough heat. There's nothing that shouts out about her food. It was wishy-washy, Greg. I think maybe I thought I was better than I actually am, which is a bit of a rude awakening. So, say so yeah, a little bit disappointed. Leng, I quite like him. You're not sure about Leng? Well, I'll tell you why my issue is that Leng's given me so much promise and it tasted to me like chicken at 35,000 feet. And it wasn't good. And I felt exactly the same way with the invention test. But actually, the sauce that he made with the vegetables was very nice. I think I've split them all day, to be honest. So, and I think it'd be interesting to see what the decision is, you know, or maybe they just have to go out the back and toss a coin or something and decide on me. <laughs> Some really interesting, very, very innovative, quite exciting food and a great day. The first contestant leaving us is Drew. Thank you. Gutted, but not surprised, really. Everyone was really good, um, and I screwed up, so back to work. Second contestant leaving us is Beanie. I'm really still really glad I did it. I'm very sad to be going home, but there are not many people that get to say they've been on MasterChef, so that was pretty cool. Congratulations. a tough test today, that's for sure. Today, you present your food to winners and finalists of MasterChef. Matt Follis, Tom Reynolds, and Daksha Mystery. Four main courses in one hour, four desserts 15 minutes later. Today, there are only two quarterfinal places up for grabs. That means two of you will leave the competition. Go for it. One hour, let's cook. I'm feeling excited, I'm feeling nervous. I really have to cook well today and be prepared. 
what are you going to cook for us? Loin of cod wrapped in prosciutto with a poached egg, crushed new potatoes with a bit of spinach running through and a chive butter sauce. And then for dessert, sort of a milfoy, but with shortbread instead of puff pastry, with a lemon and basil cream, some raspberries and a raspberry cooling. Ooh! Yeah. Who have you been experimenting on? Mainly my family. And because they love you, they're going to love everything you cook, aren't they? Oh, no, they're quite mean sometimes. Yeah. Mean or honest? No, mean. <laughs> Roast cod wrapped in ham, lovely flavours. Why the egg? The egg could disappear and the dish will be better for it. Anna's flavours I'm not convinced by. Raspberries, lemon and basil. That's slightly odd. I'm going to give it my all today. I really want to place in the, in the quarterfinals. I'd like to show the judges that I do know what I'm doing with spices. I hope I can really deliver. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. Um, I'm making a Carolyn fish curry with rice and crispy okra. And for dessert, I'm serving pear tarts with a spiced caramel and pistachio gelato. Ooh. In that room is a woman who knows the food of India very, very well. In fact, she cooks mainly <laughs> from the region of Gujarat. Yes. How does that make you feel, then? Um, as a fellow Gujarati, it's difficult. Um, it would be amazing to get fantastic feedback from her. I think if it goes to plan, they will say, this man knows how to use spices. What I'm excited about for Ricky are the flavours. There's no duck and banana today, which I'm really pleased about, but we've got good fish curry and we've got pears with pistachio nuts and honey. Fantastic. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and, uh, you know, I'm my own biggest critic. And I would be very disappointed if I didn't make it through. But deep down, I really, really want to get through it. <laughs> You've got gadgets all over the place, but I can't work out what you're cooking. It's basically quite simple. It's fish and chips, but done hopefully a little bit fancier. So I'm doing pan-fried sea bass, uh, crispy roast potatoes, then a pea shoot salad as a representation of mushy peas, uh, and then, of course, the tartar sauce. And dessert? Dessert is a white chocolate fondant um, with a raspberry ripple, and then that's served with uh, raspberries filled with white chocolate. That's what this was about. Yep. Luke, you've had an amazing start to this competition. Please tell me you're not going to mess it up now. I really hope I don't. <laughs> Luke's a, a clever cook, and I do love the sound of his fish and chips. What is causing me the most concern is his dessert. A white chocolate fondant I've never seen. Inside is going to be a white chocolate liquid centre. John, that is so sweet, I'm not sure I actually want to taste it. No matter how far you get in this competition, you have to cook as if you're cooking for survival every time. What are you going to cook for us, Ling? I'm making a marinated steak that's going to be served with some sautéed potatoes. And with that, there's going to be my interpretation of a chimichurri sauce that I've made that will go over it. Dessert? A dolce de leche apple crumble, which I'm going to make um, a custard for as well. We've basically got a marinated steak with a salad and some sautéed potatoes. It's going to look like we've attended Ling's barbecue. And I'm a bit disappointed. You have just ten minutes on those main courses. Ten minutes. Judging the food today is Daksha Mystery, a 2006 finalist. You know when you go on MasterChef, there's no price. The price is what you're going to learn, is what you're going to take forward, and that's what's going to take your passion further. After the competition, she left her job as an office administrator and has spent the last eight years building a successful catering business. This is what I want, yeah? I thought that my life was going to end being uh, an office clerk, but now I've got passion of my own that I can take it further. And I can say, this is me. You know, I've done it. Like Daksha, Tom Reynolds was also a finalist. Obviously, I was disappointed not to win, but I 
think as a finalist as opposed to a winner, you maybe do have a little bit more freedom, a little less expectancy. In the two years since then, he's given up his job as a plasterer and now works as an executive chef for an events company. I just find the whole process of coming up with a menu from scratch, going through the process of actually getting it onto a plate, that's the enjoyment for me. I'm in a better job. I'm happier in myself. So I think overall, I mean, it's, it's a win-win situation. The final guest judge today is 2009 champion Matt Follis. After winning, he opened the wild garlic in Dorset. It was exciting having my own place. It's the satisfaction of handcrafting something and then sending it out and seeing the delight on somebody's face. Over the five sides, years, the business was booming, so much so that he relocated to a bigger venue. But over-expansion forced him to shut up shop months later. It wasn't viable. I made a mistake in the move that I made. But he's now back in business after launching a new fine dining restaurant in Dorset. I love cooking and I, I love the buzz of being in a kitchen. You know, talk to any chef who stayed in the trade more than a few years. They do it because they love the job. Right, you've got just on five minutes left. Do you be on time? Yeah. Good. Anna's main cod wrapped in prosciutto with a poached egg chive butter sauce. My worry, there's got to be an awful lot of flavour in that chive butter sauce to really bring it out, otherwise it's just going to be a bowl of mush. I'm not excited by it, but in the same breath, if she executes it perfectly, I'm sure we'll all be very happy. Think about that food getting on your plates now. Love the look of that fish. Love it. Oh, balls. What happened? I broke a yolk. You're on time, Anna. You've got about 10 seconds left to be exactly on time. Well done, you. Finished? Finished. Off you go. Thank you. How are you? Good. You've got loin of cod wrapped in prosciutto on crushed new potatoes, spinach, a poached egg and a chive butter sauce. Thank you. The way it looks, it's a little bit disappointing. I've got water running either from the poached egg or the spinach, which is messing up what looks like quite a good butter sauce. For me, I think the fish is just undercooked. The spinach is a bit undercooked. So the dish is a little bit squeaky because everything's a little bit undercooked. Uh, but I think she's done a pretty good job. The butter sauce is light, but I can't taste the butter. I think it's watered down with the spinach. And my fish is, I feel as though it's a little over. I think my piece of fish must have been in the middle between yours too because it's perfectly cooked. I like the whole dish. I just think the execution is being harsh is a little bit sloppy. Nice cod, lovely ham, good beurre blanc. I'm happy with the egg on it. Those potatoes are awful, watery and vinegary. The egg for me is a bit nasty. Done. Right. Well done. Thank you. In 15 minutes, we want dessert. Yep, I'm on it. Like a carb on it? Absolutely. Dessert seems to be like shortbread meal food. It's very simple, but if the shortbread is made correctly, I think it'd be quite nice. That's very nice. Thank you. You've got a lot of playing up to do, haven't you? Let's we'll start on. now. Come on, Anna. like a raspberry balancing act. It is. It usually balances better. Is there another layer of cream and raspberry going on top of that? Yeah. Why did I do this? 
anything else? No. Go. Oh. You're shaking. That's I'm your problem. Shaking too much. Okay. Deep breath. I'm so sorry, it's just fallen over. <sighs> so sorry. Thank you so much. It just looks lovely. You've got a shortbread milfoy with lemon basil cream, raspberries and a raspberry coulis. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. You've got, you've got the one that stayed up. Simple engineering mistake. Should have spread the raspberries around and, and she hasn't. Nice crunch on the shortbread and the flavour of the basil cream with the coolie is fantastic. Really, really nice. If it was all about the shortbread, 10 out of 10. That's really good shortbread. It's sweet, it's fresh, um, it's obviously very light as a whole dish. Um, I could quite happily eat all three plates. Um, I think it's a really nice dessert. <laughs> quite how it's still standing up, I've got no idea. Oh, yeah! I thought it was going to be a little bit weirder than that, but in actual fact, I quite like it. That is absolutely lovely. <sighs> I'm so relieved that's over. That was ten times worse than the last round. Oh. I really need a glass of wine. <laughs> <sighs> Are you ready? Um, I'm gonna have to be. Have you got all the fish on? No, no I haven't. I need quick, to get quick, quick. You've got to move your bottom now. Yeah. If there's ever gonna be a difficult judge to please with some food of India, it's Daksha. If he's got overboard with the spices and put too much chilies in it, then I'm afraid he's not made the genuine Carolyn fish curry. But hey, let's see. Um, I'll be the judge of that one. Two minutes and a half, your fish is not cooked yet. Come on, quick, quick. We should be going now, Ricky. Good. Done? Done. Let's go. Hi there. Hello. I'm sorry for the delay, um, but I've prepared for you a Carolyn fish curry, that's sea bass, with rice and crispy okra. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A curry to present is difficult, and he's done a pretty good effort on this. The Carolyn curry that I know of, the flavours are individual flavours here. I can taste the heat at the back of my throat, but I can't taste anything else. Fish has been cooked very well indeed, excellent. Just a little disappointed in the flavours. Um, I was quite excited about the dish dish. I don't like it, is the honest answer. I can't taste the flavours in it. The rice, for me, is a little bit overcooked and is, is lacking seasoning. It's, for me, it's a miss as a dish. The okra, never had it before. Can't say I want to have it again. It's a big letdown for me, uh, in, in a sense that I can't taste the depth of the flavour. Crispy skin on my fish, which is wonderful. The sauce, for me, it's spiced lovely. Ricky's fish curry is absolutely delightful. You've got about 12 minutes now to get your dessert out. <sighs> so Ricky's dessert, individual pear tarts, spiced caramel, pistachio gelato. Now, pistachio I'd recognise in Indian cooking. I'm not so sure about spiced caramel, and I've never had pear. So there's a, there's a bit of a crossover of cuisines there. Flavour-wise, I think it will be really nice, but... I am concerned there's a lot of techniques in there. I'd be anxious about doing it, so I think Ricky should be. You happy with that? I think the tart was just in two minutes too much or on a too high temperature. You got a minute. I need you to be on time, Ricky, OK? This one. There's a pattern emerging here, mate. Can we get this out? Is that it? That's it. Good boy. I'm proud of you, Ricky. Let's go. You have a pear 
pear tart with spiced caramel and pistachio gelato. I hope you enjoy it. For me, this is totally the opposite of his first dish. This is messy presentation. The ice cream's a bit lumpy. The sauce is too thick. But actually, it tastes good. The flavours are nice. Pear's well cooked. Uh, I like the flavour in the caramel. The pastry's gone a little bit hard. It's actually sticking to my teeth because I think the caramel's gone a bit over there. But to be honest, in a good homely dessert like this, I, I kind of like it. In my mouth, I've got like a, an old-fashioned toffee that my granddad used to have in his cardigan pockets. And it's got the same effect on my teeth as it had back then when I was six years old. <sighs> I'm really disappointed. I think John and Greg are looking for somebody who can do everything in time, and I haven't shown that today, so I'm very worried that I'm going to be going home today. In essence, you could say that Luke's main course was posh fish and chips. Um, how posh, we'll see when it, when it arrives. So the sea bass, it's got to be cooked well, got to get the crispy skin. It'll be interesting to see how that comes out. And the pea shoot salad, hopefully, that's going to be something a bit special. How long we got? You've got about one minute, 45 seconds. OK. Are you going to go in there with the rings on the potatoes? No, they're coming off. Smells great, Luke. Good, good. A couple of minutes over. Nice dish, though. There we go. Sorry, I'm a little over. That's all right. It's um, pan fried sea bass with a uh, pea shoot uh, salad, potatoes, and then there's a tartar sauce. I hope it's OK for you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Well, I think he's pretty much nailed at every single element of the dish. I'm very happy with the tart sauce. This fish is beautifully cooked. I love the potatoes. I think it's fantastic. This is a real treat. Those peas are outstanding. You know, everybody loves their mushy peas. It's more of a fine dining mushy peas. Lovely. And the tartia sauce? You know, the key at this stage is, can he do a sauce? Yes, he can. Mm. Really, really good. Mm. I think it certainly shows the potential of somebody who could, who could go a long way in the competition. Do you know what I think is really clever? Is the pea shoot wrapped around all that vinegar dressing, which is really, really strong, is as if I've got the vinegar on my fish and chips. It's a lovely, lovely plate. Very, very clever. Boy, that boy can cook. <sighs> right, you have got 13 minutes. Yep, so you need to get your fondants in the oven pretty sharpish. The dessert, white chocolate raspberry ripple fondant with raspberry sauce. I've done this many times, but not with the white chocolate. So white chocolate is very, very fiddly, and it can go wrong quite drastically. So I'm a bit, bit concerned about it. Definitely need more time. OK, well, how long do I need? Probably another four minutes at least. Fine. In four minutes, we're going to have to get them out, though, aren't we? We are. Uh, white chocolate fondant, I've had them before with a really sick pea. It'll be interesting to see how that comes out. Right. Fingers crossed. Yes. Right. Good. Oh, my word. Sorry for the delay, guys. What you've got there is a white chocolate uh, raspberry ripple fondant, the white chocolate filled raspberries, and then a raspberry coolie um, to uh, just uh, take the edge off, hopefully. <laughs> Cheers. Looks good. There's only one thing for it, isn't there? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Definitely a fondant. I don't really like the fondant on its own. It's a little bit too sweet, which is why he's added the sauce, and he's got those additional sharp flavours. So for me, 
all together, it really works. Mm. Very good, very well executed. And the fondant's perfect. I like the way he actually injected the sauce in the middle to give you the more tartness of the raspberry coming. To execute a white chocolate fondant at this stage of the competition and to be smart enough to balance those flavours, well done. Cleverest cook in the room, but it's not too sweet. I was wrong. The raspberry sauce is lovely and sharp. Clever boy. Impressive, clever, technically gifted. All the bells and all the whistles. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been under so much pressure in my life. <laughs> I knew the fondant was going to be a big risk, but, you know, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. I'm not here to play it safe. I like it that way. It's much more interesting. <laughs> Don't forget, Daksha's no steak. So three with steak, pull yeah. up. Just over five minutes left. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Leng's main. For me, it's a bit simple. MasterChef future depends on it, and we're getting a, a version of steak and chips. To me, this reads, it's dull. Mixed salad, what the hell is mixed salad? It, it needs to be something really special. Ready for closing in a moment. You all right, Ling? Yeah, I just got the shakes. I can do this. You're a minute over. Right, OK. Sauce. And that's it? Yeah. You're done? Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Hi. There we go. And what I've made for you is a marinated steak that's got my own sort of version of a chimichurri sauce. There's some sauteed potato and a mixed salad. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. I'm disappointed, I'm afraid. I'm really not looking forward to eating this. I'm trying to find some positives. The beef's been put into a cold pan and heated, so it's grey on the outside. It's not only rare, but it's stone cold, which makes it a little bit chewy. The potatoes are cold, the potatoes are limp and oily. And I think he's probably dressed the salad a while ago and it's kind of limp. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's shocking. You've got to be able to cook a very good steak and salad to get yourself in a quarter-final. Uh, unfortunately for Lang, this is not a very good steak and salad. 15 minutes now till dessert, please. Absolutely. So, for Lang's dessert, it's crumble, custard. Yeah, I'd be happy if my mum did that on a Sunday. One thing I can't stand is a lumpy custard. How's your custard? I think it's worked. Crumble! <laughs> Ready to rumble with... Crumble. Let's go. Hello. Sorry. And here we have... Apple and dolce de leche crumble and a vanilla custard to go with it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Smells are fantastic. Can't wait to dig in. The custard's a lovely consistency. Um, fruit tastes delicious. My one gripe, um, my crumble isn't quite cooked. It's a little bit floury. This is nice. I'd eat it. I'd be happy with this after my Sunday roast. It's an OK apple crumble that isn't quite cooked right. Yeah, but after the first dish, when you get this, you feel a little bit happier. Don't get me that... wrong, it was an improvement on the first dish, but, you know, the it's, first it's... dish wasn't much to improve on. No, it's a good effort um, for a crumble. That's not a bad crumble. I think the crumble top is really lovely. I quite like the custard. The bit underneath, I could take it or leave it. I find an apple and caramel too far too sweet for me. I just feel completely exhausted by that whole experience. I'm, I'm pleased I did it, and I don't think I've poisoned anyone, so I think that's always a good sign. 
So, our job today is simply choose the two best cooks and put them through. Well, I say simply. A bit of it is simple. And that is the wonder of young Luke. He is right up there, isn't he? He is taking food, which everybody knows, and making it very, very special. Brilliant. Love him. Luke sails through to the next round. Lang disappointed me today. What was going on with his main course? I mean, a raw slice of cow. What's he thinking of? For dessert, we had an apple crumble, which you really liked. Custard, which was good, but it was crumble and custard. Anna came in the competition and we really liked her food. Cod in bacon. I, I like that. I, I didn't mind the, the egg at all. I'm sorry to say I can't do egg on top of normal fish. I can't. But a dessert, faultless. I really hope I've done enough to stay in the competition. Even just to say that you were a MasterChef quarter-finalist would be incredible. So, oh, we'll see. <laughs> Ricky entered this competition with a dangerous dish, duck and banana, and sorted it out and ended up with that wonderful cheesecake in the invention test. He did get himself in a tiz, though, didn't he? And his time is all, all awry. Even though you and I liked the curry, none of our guests did. Dax, she didn't like it, said it wasn't Carolyn enough. Well, I've got to take her knowledge. This really does mean so much to me. And I hope that they can see that I do have some skills. You watch him like a chef. You tell me, who's the cleverest cook? Sadly, two of you have to leave us because we've only got two quarter-final places. Our first quarter-finalist is Luke. The second quarter-finalist is Anna. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, I feel sad that I've gone, but I've enjoyed myself here. I think that ultimately it's about finding where I'm going to go to next, so that'll be it. I'm leaving today um, not only with my head held high, but with really fond memories to take with me. It's an amazing experience that I won't be forgetting in a hurry. Congratulations, you two. Call the finalists. That feels absolutely tremendous. I, I can't believe I got through. Oh, I just feel amazing. I had a great day today. It was car crash cookery, but it was, uh, it was great fun. Uh, and I can't wait to do it all again. <laughs> We've got to do that again. Oh, yeah, it's good fun, though, isn't it? <laughs> Next time, six new hopefuls will battle for a place in Friday's quarterfinals. <laughs> I think it's absolutely beautiful looking play.